Hello and welcome to the video accompaniment for chapter 8 section 2 and this one we're talking about the principle of inclusion exclusion and what this principle tells us is really how to deal with these cases when we've overcounted. How do we compensate for that? So after reading through the section watching the video you should be able to recognize when tasks can be completed simultaneously um, as in the definition of addition and multiplication principle uh, and, and be able to compensate for this overcount. You should understand how this connects to finding the cardinality of a union of sets and you should be able to apply this principle of inclusion exclusion and, and most importantly I think in this one is understand why it works to be able to because I, I hate just memorizing formulas and I don't I mean I sort of have the inclusion exclusion principle formula memorized but really it's memorized because I can just see it in my head I know why it works and so I don't really have to store it as memory in my brain I can recreate I can synthesize that information again uh, on, on command and that's what I'd like you to be able to do um, so let's get started on this talk about inclusion exclusion so we've already kind of talked about applying uh, this idea of we we take off the common elements we remove one set of duplicates right we did that in the last um, video so let's uh, try and strengthen and generalize that idea. So here's the principle of inclusion exclusion for two sets. It says if we're given two finite sets A and B, then the cardinality of their union is the cardinality of A plus cardinality of B minus the cardinality of their intersection. So think of this. Let, well, all right, let me. Um, I'll draw the, the universe of discourse for us. Helps to draw Venn diagrams for this. So I have my set A. And I have my set B. Um, let me, uh, sorry, let me make that a little bit bigger of an intersection because we'll have to think about that. So here's A, and here's B. Uh, and let's actually give ourselves uh, an example here. So let's let A be the set one, two, three, four, five, and B be the set three, four, five, and six. Then, um, so what is A union B? Well, that's the integers 1. Oh, wait, I want B to actually be a little bit bigger than that. 5, 6. Uh, let's add a couple more. Let's do 7 and 8. And this is um, all those integers between uh, 1 and 8 inclusive. And so we should get that the cardinality of A union B, so this would be one way of doing it. We first compute the union and then we count the number of elements, so we should get eight. What this is telling us is there's a different way to compute this. First, we add up the elements of A and add that to the number of elements of B and then subtract off how many things are in their intersection. So I'm gonna go ahead and depict this. Um, so over here we have one, two, uh, and three are in A and not B. Then we have, oh, sorry, now three. Three is in their intersection, right? Three is in both of them, so I'll put it in here. Three, four, uh, and five are in their intersection. And then we have six, seven, and eight are in B and not A. So what this is saying is we do, we find cardinality of A first, so this would be five. And we find cardinality of B. Uh, in this case, that is six. And then we find the cardinality of their intersection. So what's the cardinality of the intersection? The point here is, I mean, we still need to compute their intersection, but sometimes that's easier. That'll have uh, less in it um, than a union B. And so sometimes it's easier to get a hold of. There are three things that they have in common. And so what we can do is we add up the elements of A, or count how many elements in A there are, count how many elements in B there are, and subtract off their intersection. So this would end up being five plus six minus three, or eight. And that agrees with what we got before. So, right, my point here is we wanna understand why this works. So let's, let's look at this. When I count the elements of A, what am I counting in the Venn diagram? I'm counting every element that's in the A blob. So I'm counting part of the intersection, notice that. And then when I add up B, I count the elements in the B blob. I'll draw lines like this. Boop, boop, boop. And notice that uh, the elements in the intersection now have been counted twice. 
Uh, so everything in A, not B, has now been counted, um, what do I want to use, counted one time. Everything in B and not A has been counted one time, and things in the intersection have been counted twice. But I'd like to, ideally, if I'm adding up A union B, right, we don't, we don't include duplicates in A union B. And so to get just distinct values in A union B, I want to take this two and I want to subtract off. I want to subtract off one intersection. I want to change this two to a one. And so that means subtracting off a intersect B. And so that, that's why that works. Let's see a quick example. Uh, actually, sorry, before we see an example, what does this mean in terms of procedures, right? We heard multiplication and addition principle talked about in terms of procedure. Uh, and so really this is uh, telling us what, what we saw in the last video when we had that procedure that could be where a task could be done simultaneously, right? When we had those 10 bit, uh, 10 bit strings uh, and we could do a procedure, uh, uh, two procedures at the same time. So what this is saying, right? If we can perform the first, first procedure in n1 ways um, and the second procedure in n2 ways, and there are n1 two ways to do um, that there's that many that can be performed simultaneously, then the total number of ways of the performing the procedure is uh, n1 plus n2 minus um, n1 two. All right, so let's see an example of this. So let's say uh, a survey is conducted of 100 people um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's say each person surveyed was asked to respond yes or no to each of these two questions. So one, do you feel comfortable eating at a restaurant? And two, do you feel comfortable going to the movies? And so we survey these 100 people and these are the results that we get back. 14 people um, answered yes to the first question and 24 people answered yes to the second question. A total of 12 people answered yes to both questions. Um, and so what we wanna count here, what's the question? How many people answered yes to at least one of the two questions? So uh, in terms of sets, let, let's let uh, A is uh, the set of people that answered yes to question one and B, uh, the set of people that answered yes to question two. Then what this is asking is how many people answered uh, yes to question one or answered yes to question two? How many people answered at least yes to one of those? And what are all these bits of information uh, tell me? So of those 14 people answered yes to the first one. So this is telling me that number of people that answered yes, this is telling me the cardinality of A is 14. And B, cardinality of B then would be the 24 people that answered yes to the second question. And this third piece of information is telling me how many people answered yes to both of them at the same, so they marked yes, yes for their survey results. And that would be the intersection of A and B. And there's 12 people in that. So how many people answered yes to at least one of them? Well, this is asking for what is A union B? And so by the principle of ex inclusion exclusion, we can add up the elements of B, add up the, ele or, uh, add up the elements of A, then B, and subtract off their intersection. And we have all those pieces of information now. So there should be 14 plus 24 um, minus 12, or um, so that's what 38 minus 12, 26 total people answered yes to both. Uh, or sorry, not answered yes to both, answered yes to uh, at least one question. And so that's how that works out um, in practice. So in the last example, we had two questions on the survey, but what if there were say three questions on the survey uh, and we were given a little bit more information? Could we figure out how many people answered yes to all three? Um, and so let's generalize our principle for two sets to three sets. So this says for three sets, uh, all finite, A, B, and C, uh, then the cardinality of their union is, well, what we do is we add up each one individually. We add all the, the cardinalities of each set by themselves. We subtract off the intersection of every two sets, and we add on the intersection of all three. So why does this work? This doesn't look quite the same as um, for two sets. 
So let's take a look at why, why this works. I'm going to draw a big old Venn diagram here with a, uh, I'm going to make that bigger. There's A, there's B, and there's C. And so what I'd like to do here, so let's see what's accomplished by adding the cardinalities of each set individually. So A, so every time I add a cardinality, I'm going to indicate how many times I've counted the elements in each uh, little section of my Venn diagram. So once I add up A, this is what I mean. Uh, I'll count everything in this section once, this section once, this section once, and this section once. Uh, and now let's add B onto that. So now I've counted this section. Uh, this section I've now counted twice. This, this section I've counted twice. Uh, oops, that section I've still just counted uh, one time, but now I've counted this section once. All right, let's add on cardinality of C. So I've counted this section now once. This one now I've counted twice, two. The middle one I've counted three times, and now I've counted this intersection um, two times. So remember, my goal is to get a one in each one of these um, intersections. So the next thing I could do is to get this, this two here to be a one, I could subtract off the intersection of A and B. So let's do that. So minus A intersect B. All right, so that'll turn this one to uh, a one. It'll turn this one to a one. Oh, sorry, no, it won't. My bad. Uh, but the middle, the one that's uh, the three right now, that will get turned into a two. I'm going to go ahead and just erase it and write two there. So now that's been counted two times because I peeled off this intersection of A and B. All right, well, I still want to make those other twos into ones. I'm going to erase this one now. We've made that into a one. Uh, so let's subtract off, say, A intersect C. A intersect C. Um, okay, so where's A intersect C? Uh, that's going to change this two down to a one and this two also down to a one since I peeled off those elements. All right, now let's subtract off what's left B intersect C. I still have that one two there that I'd like to turn into a one. So if I subtract that off, I'll now have a one here. And uh-oh, I subtracted off this, this middle intersection, the intersection of all three, I subtracted that off again so that now that's counted zero times. So how do I compensate for this? Well, I can add in that intersection. So plus, this is why it's alternating. I subtract off, and I've subtracted off too many. So I add back in the ones that I subtracted off too many times, um, and I just keep doing like doing that. And so now if I add that intersection back on, that means this one in the middle will now have been counted exactly one times. And so now I've counted everything once, so I've counted A union B. And here we have it. That's why this formula holds. Now you might be wondering, can we do this with more sets? What's the formula going to look like for four or five or uh, an arbitrary number of sets? We'll get to that. I'll show you the formula. Um, but first, let's do an example uh, involving three sets. Classic example problems for um, principle of inclusion and exclusion involve these, these surveys. It's just a good way to get at uh, a way that, that this principle is helpful. So let's say we conduct a survey of 100 people. And the people are, are asked to pick one or more, uh, each person is asked to pick one or more of these three options of uh, what they would want to have during, um, during a pandemic. Which one of these items? And they can pick, uh, right, one or more. But they have to pick at least one. And then the results of the survey come in, 75 want toilet paper and so on and so on. Uh, so we're given information about what each, you know, just the single items and then the double items as well. And we're asked to find how many people selected all three. So let's go ahead and write this in terms of sets so we can apply the uh, principle of inclusion exclusion. I'll let, uh, let's call it T be the number of people who want toilet paper. Toilet paper. Let uh, H be the people that want hand sanitizer. And then the canned beans people, we'll call them B, canned beans. And so the 75 want toilet paper, this is saying that 
three. These are the people that want that selected at least toilet paper. They just wrote toilet paper down somewhere. They might have selected more things. Remember, T T is just the number of people that that put toilet paper down, not just toilet paper, um, but toilet paper and maybe something else, or maybe just toilet paper. Um, and so this is saying the cardinality of T would be 75. Uh, the cardinality of H would be 64. And uh, the cardinality of B, oops, got ahead of myself. Cardinality of B then would be 38. Selected beans. How many people wanted both toilet paper and hand sanitizer? So this is saying um, toilet paper and hand sanitizer, their intersection. There's 50 people here. So this is toilet paper and beans. So intersection of T and B would be 31. And then lastly, we have the intersection of hand sanitizer people and bean people, 20. And what we'd like to know is how many people selected all three. So we'd wanna know the intersection of T, H, and B. Well, wait a second. Principle of inclusion and exclusion doesn't tell me how to find intersection, it tells me how to find unions. But wait, don't I already know what the union of all these things is? A survey was conducted of 100 people and each person selected at least one of these three options. So that means when I union TH and B up, I should get back all my 100 people, right? So this, this sort of secret piece of information up here, not really secret, I mean, I told you, but maybe you didn't think to look at it, is telling me what T union B union H is. And T union B union H must be 100. And so by the principle of inclusion exclusion, um, this is telling me 100 total people. So the union is equal to, okay, so add up T, H, and B and subtract off their intersections. Uh, 75 plus 64 plus 38. And then subtract off the intersections, minus 50, minus 31, minus 20, and then add in the intersection of all three. So that's my unknown. When I do that, I will get the 100. So let's add this up and see, see what we have left. So we have 75 plus 64 plus 38, uh, minus 50, minus 31, minus 20. And so I have 100, uh, let's say implies 100 equals 76 plus this missing bit, the intersection of all three. And so we can conclude then that um, 24 people wanted all three. And there we have our answer. So we don't have to directly be asked about the union. Sometimes we know what the union is, but this is telling us, um, this will let us get information about the intersection. So it's relating all these three things, uh, all of these things together. Uh, and so we can find missing information. That's how this works. So the answer to this question then is, 24 people wanted all three. So in the last uh, example, people could select any one of three options uh, or, or one or more of any three options. But what if there were four options on the, on the survey or five or six? And uh, really the question here is, does the principle of inclusion and exclusion, can we apply that to more than just three sets? And of course we can. Um, so given N finite sets, then we can compute their union by this formula. And so this formula probably looks pretty terrifying at first glance, uh, but it's not too hard when you sort of place it in context. So this is telling us a procedure for counting this union. We first add up the cardinality of each individual set, and then we subtract off the cardinalities of every, uh, the intersection of each pair of sets. And then we'll add on the cardinality uh, of each intersection of three sets. And we'll subtract off the cardinalities of each intersection of four sets and so on and so on. And lastly, we'll get down to the, to the last one. Um, and whether this is positive or negative just depends on how many, you know, how many sets there were, how many times we alternated. 
So like for three, uh, when n was three in the statement for three sets, we added on the intersection of all three. So it would end there with n equal three. So three plus one is four, negative one to the fourth, that's an even number. Uh, so we'd just get positive one and that would tell us we're adding on the intersection of all three. Um, but this will work in general. That last one will always be negative one to the n plus one, one more than the number of sets you have. Uh, and so really this is all you do. You, you alternate, uh, subtract, add, subtract, add, and you increase uh, the number of intersets that are being intersected in each case. Uh, so maybe let's let's do one example involving this. So A1, let's let B1, 2, 3, and 4. A2 be the sets 3, 4, 5, and 6. A3 be the sets 1, 2, 5, and 6. And A4 be the set 2, 5, and 7. Notice, let's find the answer before we actually use the principle. A1 union A2 union A3. So everything in their union is 1, 2, up through 7. That's their union. And so we should get that the cardinality um, is 7 by the end of this. A1 cup. So let's, let's use this principle, see how to do it. And you should be able to do it for any number of sets after we just do 4. Uh, so actually, before I start writing that, I'd like to compute the intersections or at least find the cardinalities of all the intersections. So I'll do this in yellow. So all the intersections of two. Uh, I should write here. All right, cardinality of A is uh, four. Cardinality of A2 is four. Let's say one up here. Cardinality of A3 is four. Cardinality of A4 is three. And then we'll do, we'll find the cardinality of each uh, intersection of any pair of sets. So A1, A2, how many are we gonna have by the way? Ooh, maybe we'll get to that. Uh, A1 intersect A2. So they just have three and four common, so this is two. We can do A1 intersect A3. So compare those two sets, what do they have in common? Uh, they also have one and two, or no, they just have one and two in common, so that's two. How about A1 and A4? What do they have in common? I think just two. Yep, they just have two in common, so that's one element. Uh, there's more pairs though, there's not just three, right? We could also do A2 intersect A3. A2 and A3, three, four, five, six. It looks like five and six are repeated, so there's two elements in that intersection. A2 intersect A4. Uh, what's common there? Uh, five is common to both of them, and that looks like it's it, so there's only one element there. And we could also do, what, A3 intersect to A4. A3 intersect to A4, they have two and five in common, so it looks like we have two there. All right, let's do the intersection of all th uh, of any three sets. So we could do A1, A2, A3. So A1 and A2 just have three and four in common, and then a3 doesn't have three or four, so this is zero. Nothing in that one. How about A1 intersect A2 intersect A4? One and two, again, just have three and four in common, uh, and A4 uh, doesn't, doesn't have that, so this has cardinality zero. That's the empty set. We could also do A1 intersect A3 intersect A4. Uh, so one, three, and four. Well, one and three have one and two in common. Uh, and then four has two in it. So that's one element in common. That would just be the set containing two would be that intersection. Oh, and there's one more. What if we did A2 intersect A3, intersect A4? So two, three, and four, let's see. They have five and, two and three have five and six in common. And then four has uh, five. So this it's one element in it. And then what about the intersection of all four of them? Well, we've already seen that the intersection of one, two, and three is empty. And so if we intersect four onto that, that'll also be empty. So there's zero in that. And so what we'll do is we will add up all the cardinalities in, of the individuals. So let's sum, we'll sum up these. So that's four plus four plus four plus three, that's 15. Uh, let's sum up all of the intersections. So two plus two plus one is five, seven, eight. Uh, there's 10 
of these. And then the intersections of all three, there are two of those. And then the intersection of all four, zero of those. And then we'll alternate signs. So this will be 15 minus 10 plus two minus zero, giving us a grand total of dun -dun -dun -dun, uh, seven. And that's exactly what we, we would have gotten if we just would have found their union first. Now you might be thinking, oh, why didn't we just find their union first? Seems like that's a lot easier. Uh, well, sure, if we, if we have, you know, a one, if they're small sets, each one is a small set, yeah, sure, finding their union might just be easier than counting that. Um, but if they're really big sets, that might be a lot harder and it might be easier to keep track of the intersections because they'll be smaller, require less uh, memory, less, um, yep. <clears throat> and uh, the second thought is, well, remember in the last example, we weren't actually searching for the Cardinale of the Union. We, we knew that and we wanted to get some other piece of information. So just being able to relate the Cardinality of the Union to the Cardinalities of each of these individual um, intersections means if we have enough information, we can recover other information using this. We don't need to be finding the Union, just like that last example. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video.